touch your phone, whatever it is, as a point of contact, I rebuke that sickness to leave you. That torment to go now. In the name of Jesus, depression, leave. That mental oppression, leave. That suicidal thought, I command it to go now in the name of Jesus. I rebuke that cancer to die now and pass out of your body. There's that lady that has that tumor growth. It, it passes out of your system right now. I know that lady with growth on your breast, two of you now. That is dissolved right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I see three operations of fibroid and angels are performing the operation right now. I'm cutting it out of your body. Thank you, Jesus. There is a woman that is bleeding now. You just got healed. The thing just stopped. It, it dried up completely. Thank you, Lord. There's a guy that wounded his leg. You, you, you dislocated your bones. Move it now. You are healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we release your healing power. Let the angelic ministry flow around the world and circulate. Touch every home, every man, every woman that is watching. Everyone that is connected by whatever means now. You let the breath of God come upon them and make them whole. Even in this, wipe every form of infirmity, every form of pain and sickness thank you jesus yeah you that is dying yeah even you, you've been feeling the past two days like you are about to die you're feeling the pangs of death i rebook that thing to lose you now you will leave you have a lot ahead of you thank you jesus yeah 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 that's the energy of god that you're feeling inside you that's life flowing back into you get up get up on that place go and wash your face and get busy again you shall not die you will live that's what the lord said thank you jesus i give you praise i give you praise i give you praise i give you praise thank you lord there's a man you were poisoning that thing and moving inside you causing you a lot of pain the power of god just neutralize it right now thank you jesus glory there's a guy you feel like you just drank water fresh water you're feeling even in your throat going that is baptism of the holy spirit open up your mouth and start speaking you see his tongues you're just camboro the hika boss speak it out yeah it's baptism of the holy spirit that's what it means out of your belly shall flow river Hey, and it's happening three other women is happening the thing is spreading receive it in the name of jesus christ the son of god our captain has won the battle and he has given us victory can i hear somebody say amen <laughs> You know what Paul said, Paul the Apostle? Can I hear somebody say amen? He said, we are more, Paul, we are more than conquerors through Christ that strengthens us. One day I was trying to understand that how can we be, which, which one is more than? A conqueror is the last. He said, no, you are more than that. I went to speak in the military headquarters. One of my sons was being made a general, yeah, I think a major general, and I was the speaker. So all these generals and all of these, you know, top officials, so they were explaining military tradition. They got the wife to stand up first, and they said that the wife's rank is one step ahead of the husband's rank in the military. I said, what? And they, after honoring the mother, they now it's time to decorate her husband. I, I turned to somebody, I said, is his wife in the army? I'm not aware of that. He said, no, that's the tradition here. That the army recognizes the woman as one step ahead. That's how they honor them. The man fights the battle. But the wife is giving one step on. I don't think you're getting it. I work hard, make money, save money. Then I go and buy a beautiful jeep. Let's just bring it to my wife because I love her. I that conquered the economic world to make the money, I'm a conqueror. But the person who didn't have to fight, but he got it, is more than conqueror. That's what the situation that painted for. Jesus won the battle, but he gave us the victory. He said, The Lord shall extend the rod, the authority, your dominion from Zion. Rule thou in the midst of your enemies. So when we tell the devil, shut up. He listens. Not because he's listening to a level. He's listening to who is behind you. For the scripture says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. 
He paid the price, but he gave us the goods. Okay, back because I just have maybe one or two more things, and I'm true, really. You know, there's a lot here, but I can see it. So we'll flow with him. There are witnesses of all ages. Before Noah's flood, in those days there were fallen angels on earth messing around with me, they corrupted the earth. In that at that time, God raised Enoch. God raised people like Methuselah. God raised people like Noah. They were men of righteousness in a perverse generation. So you are talking about living in the last days. There are people that have lived in the last days before. Before their world was destroyed by flood. You can learn from them how to live in the last days. As you study prophecy, the secret for navigating through the future is in the history, in the past. In the days of Nimrod, when he was building the Tower of Babel and causing rebellion against God, bringing idolatry and all kinds of things, there was men like Abraham. And in those days, the three patriarchs came, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They served God, affected their generation. In the days of the Pharaohs, then we now have the Moses, the Joseph, the Miriam, the Aaron's. They delivered the people out of Egypt with all the occultism and magicians of Egypt. At every generation, Satan will bring out his champion, his Goliath. And God will always bring his small David and they will defeat him. And he loves using David so that the world will know that it's not by power or by man. They will know who did it. That's what God is going to do. You are the little David God is going to use to put the enemy to flight again in this hour. In the days of David with Goliath and all that, you know, God used David and a couple of mighty men that he raised. In the days of Joshua, when there were giants, nine feet tall, 11 feet human beings, and that's the kind of people you have to go and fight, and they are so wicked, God used Joshua and the Joshua generation to wipe them out. In the days of Nebuchadnezzar, it was Daniel and his three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They will not bow to persecution and go and worship the image that Nebuchadnezzar made. And God showed himself strong on their behalf. In the days of Persia, the Persian Empire that followed Babylon, Satan raised a champion by the name of Haman. He came out with a program to wipe out all the Jewish people. Guess who God raised? To tackle him, a woman, a young girl, pretty young girl by the name of Esther. Just put her in the palace. Once the madness of that Haman heated up, Esther rose up and God used her to silence. Little David, little David, little woman, young girl. And ended up that the Jews so prospered after that because they defeated the enemies. What was planned for them happened to the enemies. The Haman himself was hanged on the same gallow that he made to hang Mordecai Esther's uncle. We there will always be challenged from the devil in the kingdom of darkness, yes. But they will always suffer drastic and classical defeat. When the Greece Empire finally came after the Persian Empire, the enemy raised his worst, an antichrist, a beast. At that time, his name is Antiochus the Epiphanes. Now, when as I call this name, if you check it like yesterday night, I was reading Daniel chapter 8 and showing it to them in Amplified Bible. You see it there. And if you go, that's why I provided you the book of Maccabees. Study it so you see what happened during the Greeks. God used seven brothers called the Maccabees and then they raised an army of righteous men they dealt with this guy finally he died like a goat worms ate him like he ate Herod in the New Testament at his death as he was dying when worms were eating his body was rotten he repented made seven vows to the almighty God that he would even preach the gospel that he will sponsor his temple, that God should forgive him of all. But he's the one that used to say, I'm God. Everybody should watch me. Made that temple, went to the temple, killed a lot of people. Look at him now, confessing. 
then he said, let the whole world know that no mortal can challenge the living God. Read it, read it. You need to read those things. Second book of Maccabees, read that story. You will see how he died. It's in the book. That's God particularly permitted that one to rise as a shadow, a type and shadow of what the Antichrist will do and how he will end. That one that is coming, God will finally put him where he belongs. <laughs> he will finally flog that boy that thinks he's a God that wants to be worshipped. There's one thing with all this glory, there is so much pride in them. So that they think they're invincible. Until the stone cut out by no human hand, coming from the slingshot of David, hits them. When somebody who has maybe skill or talent or little knowledge, but he adds the anointing of God to it. It might be beauty, it might be access, it might be position like Esther, but you connect the anointing. That's why Esther declared fasting first. Knowing that this is spiritual, you have to deal with it in the spirit first before dealing with it in the physical. Before going to the king to see how to change this law, they have to deal with it and bind that prince of Pesha that is trying to wipe out God's people. You have to know that he's Satan walking from behind the scene using human beings to do that. That's why the Bible says we are not wrestling against flesh and blood. It's no human beings that we are fighting. We are fighting. It's principalities. It's powers. So if you're going to win, you have to use the weapons of our warfare. Use prayer. Use fasting. Use your faith. And deal with it first from your sin. Then take practical steps after that. In the days of the Roman Empire, Satan raised his giants. Emperor Nero, demon-possessed man, Went after the apostles, were throwing Christians. You know, they build coliseums like stadiums. It's false. Guess what they do? They bring a Christian to fight a lion and he will be devoured. They bring another one to fight a gladiator. They will be massacred. They will bring another one and that's that. They will be rejoicing. Rome, Rome. I've been to some of those, they are amphitheaters. They are now dilapidated. Where they used to sacrifice believers. What did they do for believing in Jesus? They will put them in the field like football pitch. People will be seated and be shouting. And then they will unleash three lions. Then they will take some of them and set them on fire. And people will be clapping. Set them on fire and life. What did Rome not do? Beheading of Christians. But what finally happened? Christianity conquered the Roman Empire and Christianity became the state religion. And from there, it conquered the whole of Europe. That's why some people now call it white man's religion. It wasn't white man anything. These were idolatrous nations that the gospel came to, just like it's coming to Africa and other places. It conquered the whole place. That is now, before you ordain any emperor, any leader, is a pope that has to ordain the person. And that's how it's now the church that crowns whether it's the Queen of England or King of England and all these European countries. Yet this way was where the church faces toughest battles. And now we are going to be dealing with the revived Roman Empire and the last assault. This is the last match. There won't be another. This is the last one. And this end time church and end time generation is one that's called to get into the ring. I'll be lying if I tell you it's not going to be a tough. It's like fighting Goliath. Don't think Goliath, you know, but it is when you use the weapons of our warfare. When you realize that it's not just you. That is, it, don't, don't put yourself with Goliath. Match yourself with Goliath. Match your God with him. Through prayer and supplication, remove yourself. Match you with God. Then that man will have a head on collision with the Almighty. That's what they did to Antiochus the Epiphanes. Of course, it got to a point, God released some angels. They went and flogged him. Then they tortured him. They, they caught him. He even passed out. Angels came in. Because the people of God prayed. 
People that were who had wedding, cancel wedding, they ran out in the street. Children ran out. Women, women held God and they were crying. Intercession of children and women. The man he sent to go and desecrate the temple was struck down half dead. It's going to happen again in the last day. We're going to see a move of God like you have not seen. Kabadi Sabalieto. We're going to see the, the greatest intervention of God in these days that are ahead. Look at all the things they planned for 2020 and all the things. And you see how they have all fallen apart. It's fasting and prayer. It's prayer of God's people, in case you don't know. They are regrouping. They have to go and recalculate and get ready for the next. And out of what was meant to hinder God and hinder the church, millions of people have come to Christ in this lockdown. And people, a lot of backslidden people are coming alive again. Even ministers that are beginning to rekindle again. Instead of it working against God, it's now to God's advantage. Have you ever seen where light defeated, darkness defeated light before? So, evil can never defeat good. Evil can never defeat righteousness. Never. What God needs is a group of people that will stand strong for him. Pastor Ben, you need to read. Okay, chapter 11, and Anna, because my time is up, I need to go. Uh, chapter 11 from verse 32. So there are two things you're going to see in this chapter. They are all heroes. All of them are heroes. And these are the hallmarks of faith. The hall of faith. The ones that have gone. And then we are, we are the ones that are waiting for. There are a cloud of witnesses now. Watching our generation to finish up what they started. But now... Among those heroes, there are two groups. You're going to read, yes? And what, sh- what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon, and of Barak, and of Samson, and of Jephthah, and of David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets. All those prophets of the Bible you read, these are warriors that defeated the enemy in their time. Go on, yes. He said, time will fail me to tell their full story. Here, yes, go ahead. Who through faith subdued kingdom? One of those weapons is faith. Yes. Wrought righteousness. One of those weapons is the breastplate of righteousness. Living for God. Living pure life. While they speak against you, there will be nothing to find. Moral integrity, moral excellence. Yes. Obtain promises. Did one of them, of course, is prayer. You take the promises of God and go before him in prayer. Lord, this is what your word said. And finally it comes to pass. Yes? They stopped the mouths of lions. You see, like Daniel that was thrown into the lions then. Next. Go ahead. Quenched the violence of fire. Some were set on fire. Some the fire couldn't burn them. Yes? Escaped the age of the They tried to kill them. They can't kill them. Yes? Out of weakness were made strong. Even so, when they were weak, the anointing came upon them and weakened them to do exploits. Yes? Wax valiant in fight. So were involved in war. And God anointed them like David, Samson, Joshua to conquer the enemies. Yes? They turned to flight the, enemy, the armies of the aliens. They defeated mighty armies. These are our family members. This is where you come from. This family of the lion and tribe of Judah. This is the lineage of the righteous. This is the kind of exploits that are behind us. History of victory upon victory upon victory. Never has God suffered one defeat. He will not start being defeated in your own life. Can I hear an amen? God has never been unfaithful. He will not learn how to be unfaithful, how to fail with you. It's that same God that did not disappoint this one. That same God will not disappoint you. Can I hear you say amen? Okay, yes. Women received their dead raised to life again. I noticed that most of the people that were raised to life in the Bible, I think it's only one. It's the fate of women. You remember Shonamai woman? Son died. It's the woman's fate. Remember the woman um, of Zarephath? Son died. It was woman's fate. You remember the widow Jesus raised the son from the dead? 
He remembers Lazarus, when Lazarus died. It's the faith of the two sisters. It was only in the case of Jairus. Yeah, Jairus' daughter. It, most of the time, it's women. And, and check most of the stories of people being raised from the dead. It's always one woman that stood her ground. The men will say, okay, just stop crying now. We'll have another child. But a woman knows what pain she went through to raise this child. So they hold to God, they don't, and then God had to. So when you hear stories of people being raised from the dead, it's been happening. This is our lineage. Yes, go ahead. And others we are tortured. Yeah, now, 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 now. There is a second group. And yet all of them are victorious. This second group defeated the devil not by stopping the fire from burning them. Not by stopping the sword from cutting them. Not by, by doing the same thing Jesus did on the cross. He, they laid down their lives. Jesus said, no one takes my life. I have power to lay it down. I have power. They offered their life as martyrs. Some, yeah, they were not given a choice, but they died for their faith. But they stood their ground. And that is the highest form of victory. Because that is the one Jesus did on the cross. Victory is not only I bought a new car. My faith uh, got me healed. Victory is, do you know, I was even sick and weak, but I used it and went and did crusade. And 10,000 people got saved. That is the other type of faith that can see the backside of the cross. Not only the benefit of what he died for, the faith to be able to partake in his suffering. To pay whatever price that is needed to see your generation saved. Hey. Hey, 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 hey. This generation needs to be taught the full counsel of God. Not only to re faith to receive from God, but also faith to pay a price. Faith to even die for his sake. Faith to suffer anything. As long as he will bring a redemptive value. So look at these ones. Others, read their group, this group. And others were tortured. They were tortured, yes? Not accepting deliverance. Some of them didn't even pray for God to deliver them. The three Hebrew children said, they answering the book and they said, our God who we serve is about to throw them into a fire and they just hit the phone and seven times. He said, our God who we serve can deliver us. But let's tell you, king, even if he doesn't, we're not bowing and worshiping your idol. So we're ready to die for our faith. Yes, God sent an angel and delivered them. That's the same thing with Daniel when they threw him into the lion's den. There are even cases they are not even praying to be saved or delivered. Because the highest honor go to Christian martyrs. Get it. This is not just something to live for. It's something to die for. I have a military general here listening to me sitting here now. When you sign to join the army, did you sign to leave? No, there are some who end up surviving. When you go to war, with anybody, president or commander in chief that will give you guarantee that you're coming back? No, but people do it to fight for their nation. They put their life at stake to defend their leader, their king, their president, to defend the territorial integrity of their nation. They risk their life. As long as there is a just cause. This is military, my friend. Now, if everyone runs away because there are armed robbers in the street and the police runs away, how will the people survive? So those people that come to protect the street are, are putting their life at stake. That is the kind of challenge God is giving to the last day's church. To pioneer the move of God and rescue millions of people, there will be costs. There will be challenges. There will be some that might have to lay down their life. There will be some it will cost you a lot financially. There will be some it will cost you your career. That career you have had. You were a graduate. You were a great doctor. You have made millions. But because of mission, you put most of your life in mission. And sometimes you are using a lot of those skills to treat people free in communities where people are dying in order to bring the gospel to them. You may not have ended up as much a millionaire, but you are richer than Bill Gates and all of these people, my friend. Let's balance this thing. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance. Why? 
that they may obtain a better resurrection. Because there is a better reward for them when the resurrection comes, when the rapture comes. The martyrs are even the ones that are the highest, the most, the highest in the honor. Just like Jesus, who laid his life, he gave him the highest honor. God has highly exalted him and given him a name above him. All Christian martyrs are going to be having that highest place of honor next to him. After that, others. You know, people know that people die joining the security agencies and they still join. So now you know that sometimes people die fighting the battle of the Lord. Are you willing to volunteer your life for his cause? David knew that going to challenge Goliath might be risky, but he put his life. Why? He said, Who is that uncircumcised Philistine to be mess, mess, messing up the armies of the living God? Look at how the Jews are in hiding. He said, I have fought a lion. I have fought a bear. This man will be like one of them. The same God that delivered me from the lion and from the bear will deliver me from his hand. He knew the risk. Go ahead, verse 36. And others had trial of cruel mocking. So some of them will be tried in court or even arrested. Others will be tried in public opinion. Media will write also some things about you. Social media stay focused and keep doing what you're doing for god yes of queer mockings and scourging scourging is flogging they flogged jesus 39 they flogged paul 39 three times we rod we rod though he, he will come out of it the brother will treat his wound next time he's preaching again not sitting down oh god hey, why did you let this happen to your servant <laughs> We are in the military, we are shooting, we are in a battlefront. A bullet just passes, it just knocks off your cap. He said, Lord, Lord, wait. This is war now. Don't you understand? It's only your bullet that should be hitting. You don't know that the other side hits. You're in a wrestling match, and you've been hitting the guy, hitting, and now he gives you one knock. Is that crying in the ring? Hey, mommy, what is happening? Why did he hit me? God, where are you? That's what some of you are doing. You hit the devil, he hits back. Stand strong and be courageous. Be bold and courageous. Not Christianity without spine. Christianity of cowards. Jellyfish Christianity. No way. Others were scorched. Yes, moreover, some others went into bonds. They were arrested and put others in prison and they went to prison. Verse 37. They were stoned. Some were stoned. Yes. They were sown as some. Some were sown into to cut into pieces with the sword. Some were beheaded. Yes. Some were tempted. Some went through a lot of temptation. Yes. We are slain with the sword. Some were slain with the sword. Yes. They wandered about in sheepskins and good skins. Being during the tribulation, this will happen. Some people will be living in villages, even in bush, where they are hiding, in the bunkers. And in those days, you can't visit the supermarket to buy clothes, to go and get new toothbrush or new toothpaste. Some will have to use charcoal to keep it. Some will have to use stick to be... Yes, people did it during the Biafran War. So what is... They say, no, 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 this is too much. I need to go and collect that mark. No, believers won't. No true believer will. Is it not three and a half years? And at the end of the day, we're, we're moving to a thousand years. We are, we're going to be paid for of dominion and rulership and of everything that human heart dreams of. So we wonder about his sheep scope. Because they, they kill animals, use the skin. Because they are living in caves and in bush, trying to hide from. Yes, go ahead. Being destitute, afflicted, tormented. Do you know what destitute is? It doesn't have accommodation. Because of what is going on. This is war time. Your parents did it during the war. There is a new generation that they don't understand anything about suffering for Christ. Pastors are pampering them with only promises. You need to be trained well. It's ministry. 
You are in the end time army. You must be trained to endure hardship. And that's what Paul wrote to Timothy. He said, endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Maybe I'll start bringing military men to talk to us in church. Yes, Christian military men. Talk to us about the kind of tough training they go through and how life is during war. Those who have been in some operations. So that you understand what a being a military man is. There's too much civilian Christianity. When you talk to some of these our, our, our brothers and sisters that are fighting in Sambisa Forest or in whatever, you understand what, what it looks like. That's not the place where you're talking about buying a uh, new phone, iPhone 5. Uh, uh, do you know the latest Lexus? No, you're talking about coming out of our life, defeating the enemy. The reward will come later. The honors will come later. The great tribulation is coming when the end time church will be put in the ring face to face with the dragon. And it's the same one that Jesus defeated on the cross. Don't fear him. That's why he said they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. Remember the cross. Use it to defeat him again. But one of the things he mentioned there is by they love not their lives unto them. These people are sold out to go to the point of being willing to die for him. If it comes to that point, so be it. Because we don't lose no matter how it goes. Christianity doesn't end here. Our faith doesn't end here. There is a resurrection and there is a second coming. Just like he had a second coming, there will be a second coming for every believer. Yeah, yeah, look at it. Of whom the world was not worthy. Go ahead, sir. Of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. Verse 39. And this all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. Because the ultimate promise of resurrection, they have to wait for us to finish. Then they can now reward everybody. They are all still waiting. Yes, verse 40. I have to close. Yeah. God, having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. You see that they have to wait for us, and our own opportunity is better. Our own is world heavyweight championship. If at the time of Abraham, Abraham won. At the time of Moses, they defeated the devil. At the time of Joshua, they defeated him. At the time of David, they defeated him. At the time of Esther, even again, defeated him. At the time of Daniel, dealing with the beast of Babylon, they defeated him. With his three friends. At the time of the Maccabees, they defeated him. At the time of Jesus, he defeated him. At the time of the apostles, they defeated him. It's our time. Are you going to push shame on the name of the Lord? Because you don't have courage. I think I need to show you something. Revelation chapter 20 verse 8. I think it's 21 verse 8, yeah? There's something I need to show you there. The list of people that will go to hell. I want you to see the first two groups. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and warmongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone. Now, all this will be thrown into hell. But there are bad people, like sorcerers are witches and wizards. Woomongers are people sleeping with people's wives and people practicing all kinds of sexual abomination. Abominable. These are people practicing perversion. Murderer. People. These are people that shed innocent blood. I don't know that. These are people that worship idols. Then you have unbelievers. That's number two. But the number one group are cowards. What send them to hell is fear. The fearful. Please put up another translation. This is amplified. Pastor Ben, read it again. Let them see. But as for the cowards and the ignoble and the contemptible and the cravenly lacking in, co co in courage and the cowardly submissive. Did you see that? 
As for cowards, they lack in courage. They will just yield to the enemy because of They end up where people that killed people ended. Where people that are in your court ended. Where people that, that are committed all sorts of abomination ended. Take note of that. I'll end this way. This book, the book of Maccabees, ended with a chapter, the fourth book of Maccabees. The story is about seven Hebrew boys. When this Antichrist arose from the Greek empire, invaded the land of Israel, polluted the temple, was getting people to do everything that God said not to do. He just turned the Ten Commandments the other way. An elderly priest that was already elderly refused to join that. That was the first man that was courageous. So the man said, we're going to tear you apart. He said, ah, what a better way to die. Is it the fate of my father? What I have practiced all my life at this old age, I start compromising. Of course, the man even preached to the Antichrist himself. When he finished talking to him, they put him and tore him apart. There is equipment they brought for torture that tears people, and he died. Before he died, when they put him in the machine, other Jews that know him, they respect him, came and whispered to me, said, sir, Shay, what he wants you to do is eat pig, all these polluted animals. Let's get you beef. We'll give it to you. Just pretend that it's pig. He said, I will not do it because if I do, the young generation that are watching will miss it. They will think I ate the pig and then they will start a compromise. I will not disappoint but by compromising. These men have been trained how to die the hero's death. And he died. So there are these seven brothers and their mom. They are so that serving God, the man brought them. He picked the first one. You will read about their death. Just like Stephen's death in the Bible, in Acts chapter 6. He talked to the first one, you are the first son, you are, you look handsome and nice. If you join what we are doing, I will make you, put you in power, and he'll make you very wealthy. And that's what the Antichrist will use. Power and wealth. You get, have economic ability, you take the mark, you can do whatever you like. The guy said, me. What my fathers, Abraham did, Jacob did, Isaac, David, and other. It's in my generation I will start compromising. For what? The man said, you, we will tear you apart. He said, I'm willing to die for my faith. He said, well, you, the beast, you will die a miserable death and in hell. Me, as I close my eye, the angels will take me into the bosom of Abraham. And they put him and tore him apart. So he thought his brother would be afraid because there are seven brothers. The next one walked up by himself. So what are you waiting for? You need to read those things. This is how to defeat the Antichrist. They love not their lives unto death. That's what the early church did. He said, what are you waiting for? I can even help you people. The man said, are you crazy? Don't you understand? I will make you rich. You will join my government. Just deny all these Jewish things and all this to the God of the Bible. And he talks against God because the one that is coming, what he will say against Jesus and against God, against the church, against the Bible, you will be rich. They tore him apart. The third one stepped forward. Seven brothers. And their mom was there. Normal woman of today, led by emotion, you start crying. That one took time to preach to the Antichrist. Then he prayed. He said, Lord, all of them prayed. He said, Lord, let my blood bring about redemption and forgiveness for the people of Israel, even the ones that have derailed. Let my death cause this tribulation to end. That you use me. I have opportunity. I can go and take the money he's offering. But I willingly offer my life. Look at it, Lord, and let it. And then they will commend their spirit. And they will put them in the machine, cut them. Sometimes they behead them. I think one of them, they set him on fire. When they finally got to the last boy that was a teenager, and the guy was so handsome, the man Antiochus, the beast, that's the Antichrist, he brought him, he said, I even like you. You are so handsome, and I can see that you are going to make a great leader. I will make you one of the governors in this territory, make you very rich. Deny God. Deny all these things. 
Then he turns to the mother, who has just lost six boys. And then this is the last one. He said, this is your last boy. You better talk sense into him. Use the emotion of your mother and talk to him. The woman said yes. So he called the boy by the side and spoke to him in Hebrew language and said, you dare not disappoint the God of your fathers. You dare not disappoint Abraham, Isaac, and Jesus. You dare not deny the covenant that God gave to the Jewish people. Die a hero. How many women of today? You carry emotion. You think it's emotion. Faith is different from emotion. Faith is conviction. Conviction rules over emotion. And the boy turned to the mother and said, you think even if you told me to deny that I will? Is it not the same discipleship, the same training that our father gave me and my brothers? You think maybe because I look young that I'm, I'm even more committed than them. And they turned to the antichrist and told him, let me tell you a secret. I'm more committed than even my brother that you have killed. As for you, I'm not even waiting for you. I can help you. I think he even jumped into the fire, jumped into the machine and died. And then the man now turned to the woman and said, all your children are dead. I hope you won't be stupid. Deny the whatever. That was it. She died. And Tiochus got angry because he had been defeated. Why is he giving them option? Because they need your will so that it will be that you have chosen the enemy. Take the mark. Why won't you just carry me, tie me in chain and inscribe the mark by force? It won't have effect. But they need me to agree. Are you people hearing what I'm saying? So you now use threats. So he left in anger. Commanded all his army that invaded to follow and they left. And then he went to fight one war. And then he found that his money, he, because he's using economic power to deceive the whole world, to rule everybody, money has depreciated. Because those people prayed before each one died. Take note what I'm about to say. All unjust suffering has redemptive value. The blood of the saints is the fire that sparks revival. The blood of the saints is the seed that sparks redemption. Is it not because David risked his life that Israel defeated Goliath? Is it not because this, uh, uh, Daniel was willing to go to the lion's den and the Hebrew children to be turned into fire that God reversed the captivity of Israel and brought them back? Is it not because Jesus paid his life with his life that we have redemption today? Is it not because the early church, the initial church father stood, they were martyred that Christianity conquered the Roman Empire? All unjust suffering has redemptive value. It is not dying in vain. Apart from the reward you're going to get in heaven. And all of the greatness. You need to know that that is what paves way for the enemy to be taken out finally. The court of heaven sits and they took away his tomorrow because they see you have tried Job. Job did not bow. You have tried the three Hebrew children. They did not bow. What else? It's time. And they got him arrested and threw him into the lake of fire. When those boys defied him and he killed all of them and they would tell him where he would end, how miserable he was going to die. He said, you kill me for being virtuous, for being right. You as a leader should be praising what I'm doing. Not that I did anything bad, I'm not a criminal, but just for serving God. That's why you are killing me. You will die a miserable death. I'm born in hell, but me, I'll go to be with Abraham. And then they will pray and commend their soul. And he will kill them. After the seventh one, he commanded all his army and left. Then he called his soldiers and told them, if you people are as committed to the cause as these Hebrew boys, there is no country we can conquer. That we all need to learn from them. This, learning, this the, the Antichrist talking to his When he got home, God created a distraction. A war broke out. He went to fight. When he got there, his army was defeated. As he was coming out depressed because the first time he's suffering defeat. God is answering the prayer of this. As he came out, he heard that thousands of Jews, because of the courage of these young men, became bold. They were not doing so. He, he wanted to go and invade Jerusalem the second time. Angels struck him. 
struck him down with a disease he was smelling nobody could come near and as he was there warm started eating him alive and then they tortured him the kind of torture he went through before he finally that's when he started repenting making vows and the evil spirit that possessed him when he was about to die left him that evil spirit that made him behave left and it will happen to the antichrist again remember it happened to judas after the devil finished using him at that last minute they left him that's why he went to commit suicide that evil spirit left him he came back to he started confessing he said all this suffering because of what i did to those hebrew children the things like he took a woman just for circumcising her child a woman jews you give birth you circumcise your child he took both the woman and the baby threw them and they shattered in the rocks he started remembering all the evil he did he wrote a letter of apology to the jews and asked them forgiveness beg god for forgiveness promise him that he will help to tell the whole world that he is the one that is god agreed that he's a human being that he's not god that's the person that used to think he was god promise to even preach promise money to the temple promise to rebuild the temple he destroyed and messed up but of course god will never forgive god didn't forgive him he died miserably and perished if you read about the one that is coming you see how i wish i had more time to get in there and show you he will also perish and end up in the lake being the first human being to be thrown into the lake of fire even before the devil the devil came later all those jews that joined him in that corruption they they paid dearly and at the end of their righteousness triumph the temple was restored and the Jewish people moved into an era, a golden era. And that's what happened preceding the birth of Christ, the coming of Christ. Now, before his second coming, we're going to have another season like that. And that's what the Bible is prophesying that is coming in the future. Just like the coming of Elijah will precede his first and second coming. In his first coming, he came as John the Baptist, going to come again. The enemy will do his worst just before he came the first time and before he comes the second time. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldier of the cross. Lift up his royal but it must not suffer from victory unto victory. His army shall he lead till every foe is vanquished and Christ. He is Lord indeed. From victory unto victory, his army shall he lead. Till every foe is and Christ is Lord. When a war is over and you are honoring those that fought valiantly to obtain victory for their nation, there's also honor for falling heroes. Am I correct, General? Actually, the kingdom of God, they are the ones that are given the highest honor. It's because of that, their life, they sacrificed, that victory came. They were talking about the war, like whether it's the Second World War, and there was this military ship that has about 5,000 people operating in it from where they launch aircraft and the Japanese flight bomber was headed. He wants to reach that ship and bomb it so that it will massacre not only the equipment but those 5,000 Navy 
soldiers or officers. And a flight pilot, a US flight pilot, saw what was going on and saw what you know what the guy did? He forget about it. He carried himself, not just the bomb he was firing, because he saw so many fighter jets firing at him. He maneuvered through all the bullets, went for that one that was going for the ship, and plung his aircraft on it. Destroy that enemy that was coming. And of course, you can imagine the two aircraft explodes with fire on them. Just to save his brothers and to save his nation from defeat. That was they are talking about now. From victory unto victory, his army shall he lead till every fall is vanished and Christ is Lord ladies and gentlemen I hope you know that that's exactly what Martin Luther King did If have you listened to that his last speech I've been to the mountain top I've seen the promised land we as a people will get there but I will not get there with you because his life was to be offered so that African Americans of all ages can get liberty and certain rights that are enjoying today. Today again there is a new fight to take care of what Martin Luther's death didn't take care of. But remember what his death achieved. 40 years after his death we could have a black man in office, Obama. Obama is reaping what Martin Luther sold. Remember what Nelson Mandela did to the seven years of his life in Robben Island. He was like death in prison. But finally he conquered appetite and brought freedom to black South Africa. You think the weapons for conquering is just faith, binding, and prayer? No. Self-sacrifice is the most dangerous weapon in the arsenals of the saints. Self-sacrifice that's what Jesus did on the cross. They love not their life unto death. When you get a generation of Christians that don't fear death, that don't mind to pay any price, then you can unleash the army God has been waiting for for the last days. They will go wherever God said to go. They will give whatever God said to give. They will do whatever God said to do because they don't care what it costs them. Self-preservation is what is defeating the church today. Self-centeredness is what is defeating us. Selfishness is what is defeating us. Self-sacrifice is the Christianity of the Bible. If you will come after me, deny yourself. Take up your cross. Be willing to do what I did on the cross. Jesus died for you on the cross, but now he's calling you to die with him. To share in his suffering. Every Christian must come to that point. You might, not every believer that will be called to go through this extreme, but every Christian must have that level of commitment. Doesn't matter what it is. All of you at home and here, everybody put your hands on your hand and pledge your life, Lord it's like they say in marriage till death do us pass. Even if at the cost of my life there is no backing out. I give you my life completely with nothing reserved. If you are at home, even if you have not given your life to Christ, as you surrender your life, surrender it totally. Tell him I lay it down on the altar for your service. Take me and use me to advance your cause. I pledge my allegiance to you completely. I will not bow down to fear or cowardice. I will stand strong with courage for righteousness, for my God and for his kingdom, even if it means that I have to pay some costly price for it. You will only join in the heroes of faith, nothing less than that. Because of Martin Luther, African Americans 
Can you enjoy the level of liberty that I have in today? Because of Nelson Mandela. You need to see what South Africa used to be like during the apartheid era. Anytime there is a generation facing oppression, facing extinction, facing tyranny, it takes a group of people that will pay the price to free them. Father, we thank you. Pour the spirit of courage. Destroy fear. Fear of death, fear of persecution, fear of whatever threat for the lives of your children. Pour a new courage on the church. Everyone that will hear this step or the sound of my voice from anywhere on earth, pour a fresh fire upon their soul. Ignite these last days, army. Focus our eyes on the mission field of this earth. The last harvest and they equip us with what it takes. The audacity, the faith, the courage, the moral audacity, the moral character and excellence, the authority, the anointing, the wisdom to go and bring in that harvest. The willingness to pay whatever price. The love for one another. Let no hand be weak. Thank you, Lord. I give you praise. Tell him I'm part of this entire army. I'm not waiting to be recruited. I've already joined. I enlisted. I've enlisted in the army of God. And I thank you, Lord, for counting me worthy to be part of the concluding age of the church history. The final phase of God's plan on the earth. Anybody that wants to give an offering, just go ahead and do it. If you want to tie it at home, wherever, use the information on the lines to do that. If you want to give. I lay Hallelujah. Were you blessed today? Let's appreciate God for it's been an awesome service. Not just the service, uh, some of us started on, th on Thursday, so it's been an awesome weekend. And the con so uh, we are expecting you back here by 5 p.m. for the evening session. Amen.